Hey sugar geeks, Liz here. Today we are making super moist gingerbread cake with brown sugar buttercream. Hello, sounds delicious? Like bright and playful and happy, but also like, oh, I wanna have some hot cocoa and just like cozy on the couch. That's in this cake. You literally take the wet ingredients, you add them to the dry ingredients, and you stir it until you have cake batter. It is so incredibly easy, but I promise you, the texture is stunning. So you wanna make this cake or what? Let's get started. The mixing method on this cake is super easy. So in a bowl, I'm gonna go ahead and add my molasses, my oil, my room temperature coffee, my vanilla, melted butter, melted but not hot, and my eggs. Some freshly grated ginger, and my room temperature buttermilk. Then we're just gonna stir that all together and set it aside. If you're wondering what kind of molasses to use, there are actually a bunch of different options. There's regular unsulfured molasses, there's dark molasses, there's blackstrap molasses, and you might just have like one in your cabinet and you're like, yeah, this will work. But trust me, you want to use unsulfured molasses. It's gonna have the most even, warm flavor. It's not gonna be too strong. And uh, blackstrap molasses is actually super bitter and is used more in savory recipes. So yeah unsilvered. <laughs> All right, so now I'm going to measure out my uh, dry ingredients and I always use a kitchen scale so that all of my measuring is accurate and I don't have to guess with cups and all that stuff, especially for professional bakers. This makes multiplying your recipe or having it super, super easy. So for those of you who are unfamiliar with using a scale, you just take your bowl, you put it on top of the scale, you press the tear button or zero button to say, Forget about this bowl, this bowl doesn't exist. And now I can go ahead and add in my first ingredient. So I don't have to worry about measuring, like and scooping, leveling off. You just keep adding flour until you get to the right measurement, 15. Then you press the zero button again. And then we're gonna do 10 ounces of sugar. We just do the same thing, just add until it says 10 ounces. It's super easy, less dishes. Oh, I add a little too much scoops them out. Or just like don't talk while you're doing this and then probably be better. <laughs> if you wanna get more information on how to use a scale and why I use a scale, click on this link right here. Into my flour and brown sugar, I'm gonna be adding in my cinnamon, ginger, little cloves, salt, and baking soda. And then we're gonna go ahead and add in those liquid ingredients while mixing on low until everything comes together. You can mix for about 10, 15 seconds, just until a smooth batter forms, and that's it. Super simple. All right, so now I'm going to transfer this batter to my cake pans. I'm using my Bosch Universal Plus to make this cake batter, but you could use a KitchenAid, you can use a hand mixer. I have a link to this mixer in the description below. I'm using cake goop in my pans. That's just my homemade pan release, the recipes on sugargeekshow.com. And I just love this because you don't need to use any parchment paper. You can just make a big batch of it, keep it in a jar in your refrigerator or on the shelf, and you're good to go. I also like to use my scale to kind of check to see if I have the same amount of batter in each pan. So it's the batter plus pan. So that's 1.5, this one's 1.4, and that's 1.4. That way I just saw my layers bake up evenly. And then we're gonna... <laughs> so we're gonna bake these in the oven at 335 degrees for about 35 to 40 minutes until you can touch the tops and they're just set. Go ahead and take them out of the oven and let them cool for like 10, 15 minutes until you can touch the pans without them burning your fingers. Flip them out onto the cooling rack, let them cool the rest of the way. And if you wanna frost right away, throw them into the freezer for like 30 minutes, speeds that right up. You can also just wrap them in plastic wrap, leave them at room temperature and frost them the next day. So this also makes really great cupcakes. Just fill up your liners about three quarters of the way full and bake for about 18 minutes until the center is set. This recipe makes about 24 cupcakes, depending on the size of the pan you're using. All right, I'm gonna pop these guys in the freezer and I'm gonna go ahead and make my brown sugar Swiss meringue buttercream. Oh, so excited, but you can use whatever kind of frosting you like. Now to make our Swiss meringue, we're gonna start off with a pot of water. You only need about two inches in the bottom and we're gonna bring that up to a simmer. Once it's simmering, reduce it to low and add your metal mixing bowl on top. Okay, so now we're gonna add our fresh egg whites, not boxed, our brown sugar, and we're gonna whisk that 
until we don't feel any grains of sugar. You can see here the grains of sugar haven't dissolved yet, so I'm just gonna keep whisking. Make sure the bottom of the mixing bowl is not touching the water or you could scramble your eggs. Should only take a couple of minutes. Check out my original Swiss meringue buttercream for more in-depth details on how to make Swiss meringue. So you can see now that all of the grains of sugar have dissolved, so we're gonna take it off the heat. <gasps> Hi! Hey, what's up? Hi, buddy! Who's there? Oh my God. <sighs> all right, so now we're gonna whip up the eggs and sugar into a thick meringue. So good. Look at that. That's not quite stiff. A little bit more. Just kind of using the little to get the edges. Scraping with the whisk. Make sure that you whip your meringue for long enough. The peaks should stand straight up, just like this. All right, that looks nice and stiff. That looks really nice. All right, so now I'm gonna transfer my meringue onto a cookie sheet, stick it in the fridge for about 10 minutes, let it cool down, and then we can whip up our buttercream. You could definitely just stick the bowl in the fridge, but it's gonna take longer for the uh, center of the meringue to cool down, so I just like to spread it out. All right. Now that our meringue is cooled down, I'm gonna add it back to the bowl. It just needs to not feel hot. So it, it feels like room temperature to me right now. The reason why we cool down our meringue is so that the butter doesn't melt and turn into soup. <laughs> so you definitely don't wanna skip that step. If it does happen to turn into soup, you can put the whole thing back into the fridge for about 20 minutes and then re-whip it and it should be fine. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and start adding in my butter. Room temperature, small chunks at a time. Go to high. Add in the vanilla, salt, and cinnamon. And we're gonna whip that until it's light and fluffy. I give this a scrape because it's not my Bosch and it doesn't mix things. <laughs> I'm gonna take about, I'm gonna say a half cup of this out, melt it down in the microwave till it's just barely melted and add it back in because it's a little bit cold and it's not mixing super well. And this will just help it mix up. Once it's light and fluffy and tastes like kind of a cinnamon ice cream, it's done. Ezra, you wanna try a cupcake? Here you go. Oh yeah, that's tasty. Yay! All right, so we're gonna go ahead and put our first layer of cake onto our cake board in about a quarter inch of our delicious buttercream. I can already tell this is gonna be a beautiful cake. Just, I love when I see speckles of anything in mm -hmm. buttercream. And then the next layer, I've already trimmed the domes off of these cakes just so that they're nice and flat on top. Last layer. All right, now we're just gonna do a very thin layer of buttercream over the whole thing. This is called our crumb coat and seals in all the crumbs so they don't get into our final layer of buttercream. If you wanna learn more about how to frost your first cake, I have all of that information in the link above. All right, and then we're gonna put this into the freezer for 15 minutes or the refrigerator, either one's fine. Now for the drip, I'm gonna make some super easy water ganache. Six ounces of white chocolate into the microwave for one minute. We're gonna add one ounce of hot water. Microwave it for another 15 seconds or so. All right, and now we are going to whisk. You can use candy melts for this, chocolate bark. This is real white chocolate. And it's just a little bit too thick. So I'm gonna add just a cup, maybe like another tablespoon of hot water. All right, so now our um, water ganache is kind of this ivory color and it's actually really transparent. 
So what we want to do now is add some white food coloring to just take down that transparency. You can also add any other color you want. We're just using regular Americolor food coloring gel. It doesn't have to be chocolate food coloring. So sometimes after you're done mixing everything, it'll be cooled down enough that you can use it right away. You're looking for about 90 degrees. This is 98 degrees. So I just wanna let this cool down just a little bit before I pipe it onto my chilled cake. Otherwise, it's just gonna run all the way down the sides. By the time we get our final coat of buttercream on there, it should be perfect. I'm gonna add some to the top, smooth it out. Ooh, yeah. So I know what you're thinking. What's with the tiny spatula, Liz? <laughs> As you know, we're not in my studio. It's being built and being worked on. And um, I saw my husband take all of my spatulas and bench scrapers and put them into a box so that we could clean out the room, you know, making room for them to do their thing. And I didn't think in my mind to ask him where he put that box because I could not find it anywhere. And I was like, no big deal. Sent uh, Aaron, our food producer, to go grab a spatula from the store. No spatulas. Go to another store. No spatulas. So what does she do? She calls up her friend who works at a bakery and is like, I gotta borrow a spatula. <laughs> and her friend is like, you got it. Here you go. So Jane, wherever you are, thank you for the spatula. All right, now we're gonna smooth it out with a bench scraper. Make it all nice and flat. Fill in any little holes or gaps that you have, low spots. If you don't want to make the brown sugar Swiss meringue, you could just use regular Swiss meringue. You could use cream cheese frosting. Whipped cream would be really good. Pretty much any buttercream recipe is going to go really good with like a gingerbread cake. People ask me often, you know, like, why do you decide to use Swiss meringue buttercream over easy buttercream or Italian meringue? And usually it has to do with how cold it is outside, like Italian meringue is going to really withstand higher temperatures. American buttercream is going to withstand higher temperatures. Me just frosting this cake with that Swiss meringue, it just is so silky. Like that has nothing to do with like, you know, temperature wise or how it looks or anything. Even the taste wise, I feel like it's so similar, but it's so like just smooth feeling. Okay. I'm just going to clean up those edges. And now I'm going to put this back into the freezer, but first I'm going to transfer it to my cake board. You don't have to put it on your cake board before you put it into the freezer if you don't have like a full size freezer dedicated to cakes. Uh, you could do this afterwards, so it doesn't matter. I just like to do it before because then it kind of solidifies the cake to the cake board. But Liz, what if I don't have a giant turntable that's actually a Lazy Susan? <laughs> you just put it on the cake board, it's fine. I just like a flawless finish. All right, into the freezer you go. All right, we're gonna pour our water ganache into just a piping bag. I like to put the piping bag over a glass, kind of holds it up for me. All right, time to do our drip. Snip the end off of your piping bag. Just like always, we're gonna do a little test. Just make sure it doesn't drip all the way down. Look at that. I'm gonna go over and drip. Over. The little speckles in the buttercream with the white. I'm obsessed. Let me fill in the center. This looks like royal icing. Should have the perfect amount. So pretty. It's my proud face. So now I'm going to add some just little dollops of little buttercream on top. All right, so I'm gonna decorate my gingerbread cake with, of course, some gingerbread cookies. This is my gingerbread cookie recipe that you can get right there. Except for this time, I use just some melted chocolate instead of royal icing, because it's super quick and easy. So cute. Bring in the other family members. Look how cute. I love how it turned out. And it's like the perfect size for a small gathering. And now we get to eat it. Mmm. Mm. I was like Christmas in my mouth. I don't even know how to explain how this cake tastes because there is not one singular flavor that stands out to me. It just feels warm, you know? Like all of those spices, that molasses, the buttermilk, the brown sugar from the buttercream, it all just comes together and is like this delicious new flavor in my mouth and it is so incredibly good. So that's it guys, that's how you make the best gingerbread cake ever. If you wanna check out how to make my gingerbread cookies, 
recipe right over here. I'll see you guys next week. Bye. Mm -hmm.